Hello again, 121. In this video, I'm going to go over the study guide for exam number three for this weekend on chapters 12 and 13 only. What institution in the Middle Ages in Europe was all powerful? That's the Roman Catholic Church. These are very religious oriented times. The serfs and lords of the manor symbolize what type of relationship? The personal. This was the feudal age. What two foodstuffs were introduced from the New World to Europe? Corn and potatoes greatly altered the Europeans' diet and it helped them to recover from the Black Death or the bubonic plague. Aristocratic women in the Middle Ages sometimes joined the monastery. They could become nuns. This was a way out of domestic servitude for them. Thomas Becket was murdered in his own cathedral. An increased demand for the goods of the East was one of the results of the Crusades. Major themes, religious themes, excuse me, were the main subject of medieval art, music, and philosophy, right? The architecture reaching for the heavens. All the icons that were constructed during those times. Music, the different hymns that were created that are still used in many religious services today. He regained the provinces of Anjou, Normandy, and Aquitaine from the Plantagenets, and he established a royal bureaucracy, and he also waged war successfully against the kings of England. This was Philip II, Augustus of France. Number nine, they were largely men of war in medieval society. They were divided by extremes of wealth and land holdings and performing military service for their lords, were all characteristics of knights and vassals in the Middle Ages. He tried to reconcile faith and reason. He used Aristotle's philosophy and he wrote the Summa Theologica. This was St. Thomas Aquinas. A medieval guild was an early form of a union. All different craft guilds, carpentry, goldsmith making, blacksmithing, all of these different trades had those organizations, mostly in Northern Europe. The ability to sell property, exemption from military duties, and written laws guaranteeing their freedoms were all the rights of merchants in the Middle Ages, and they will form the building blocks of the bourgeoisie or the middle class in later eras in European history. They played a major military role for their religion, they enforced the tenets of the scriptures, often by force, and they served as centers of learning. These were the medieval Christian monasteries. The desire for military adventure, the desire to gain the riches and land, and to allow the Pope to assume the leadership in liberating the Holy Land, those are all different motivations for the Crusades. In later times, during the age of crisis in the 1600s when all the religious wars are going on and also in the counter-reformation as we'll see this will become known as god glory and riches as well philip ii frederick barbarossa and richard the lionheart were all participants in the third crusade. The Seljuk Turks inflicted a major defeat on the Byzantine Empire at the Battle of Manzikert in 1071. After this time, there is less and less of the Byzantine Empire left. It revives for a time and it will collapse completely in 1453. It began in Italy. In French, it means the rebirth, and this period marked a renewed interest in classical Greek civilization. We are talking about the Renaissance, the rebirth of learning. 60% of Europe's population died from the Black Death. 60%. Prosperity leads to the creation of many works of art during both the Golden Age of Greece and the Italian Renaissance. Three leading figures of the Renaissance, Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, and Raphael, the Ottomans had a distinct advantage with their cannons. Constantinople had been under siege, and they flanked the boom. They went around it, and then they used an ingenious method of rolling logs in order to reset their cannons behind the back 
of that boom and they were able then to attack the city from all sides and there was a picture in the other video of the huge cannons that they had developed very advanced for their time these are all reasons for the fall of constantinople in 1453 the longbow was a major reason for the english defeating the french at crecci and that's during the hundred years war between france and england one of the reasons for the spread of the plague was the development of the Mongol Empire. Fleas carried the disease. Fleas would follow the horses and the feed bags that were on the horses. Fleas also traveled with the rats, which liked to eat some of the garbage that is being left behind by these traveling nomadic bands. And eventually it made its way across Central Asia into Europe first down in the Italian peninsula, and then it spreads to the whole European continent. Conditions in medieval cities were very foul and very polluted. This is a very smelly place, and this is one of the reasons for the invention of perfume, ladies and gentlemen, because people might go their entire lives without bathing. What group accidentally or actually benefited from the plague? Peasants, as we talked about, they were able to buy their way out of serfdom, in some cases by exchanging their labor services for rent, and eventually they could pay their way out. There was a severe labor shortage because of all the deaths. Jerusalem was retaken after the First Crusade, but eventually it's taken back by forces under Saladin. And the Roman Catholic Church and Greek Orthodox Church suffered a schism in 1071. Finally, Joan of Arc inspired the French victory at Orleans. She will later be canonized and sainted, even though at the time she's burned at the stake for being a witch. The Eastern Roman Empire was temporarily stored under Justinian. And dukes, bishops, kings, and barons were examples of the medieval European aristocracy. Study this hard. You have the rest of the week to do this. The exam will be all day Saturday and Sunday. Good luck.